Welcome once again to the Thrifty Collector. Today we're going to go over the 1970 to 1974 ish Boyd Pierce cards. These were wrestling cards that fans could buy at shows back during the territory days. And a lot of times they would, because of the territory days, so many guys would come in and come out. So there's no telling how many of these were actually made over the years. Um, there is a website where I found a guy, it looked like he had about close to a hundred. And out of the ones that I have, there was maybe about three were the same. So I think any time that uh, anybody was coming to the Boyd Pierce territory, uh, he would just print up a bunch of cards and have fans go ahead and uh, buy them. Uh, some are uh, quite popular. Uh, the only ones I could see right now is some kind of uh, some generic guys and also uh, the Dusty Rhodes cards. The Dusty Rhodes, they go for about 60, 65 bucks each. Um, I bought this entire lot. I think there's about 19, 20 of them, give or take. Uh, I got a real good deal at a show in Milton, Florida. I think I paid the guy $25 for all of them. Uh, he had no clue what they were. And quite honestly, until I kind of did the research, I had no clue what they were. Uh, but when I found out what they were and how old they were, I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. Now, can you consider these rookie cards? Probably not. And the reason why is, is one, um, they, they're blank backs, uh, so there's nothing on the back, uh, and they're kind of more just pictures, so you could take it either way that you want. Wrestling is one of those weird things that once you think that you know the first card of somebody, you find something that was, that is completely, could be three, four, five, ten years older, or in this case, uh, if you compare it to the wrestling, uh, all-star cards, a good 12 years, eight to 12 years older than that, so... Uh, they're all black and white, and, um, and like I said, there was uh, these were pretty much set out on tables. Fans would come up, pick their favorite wrestler, and try to get some of these signed, I'm sure, if they were uh, baby faces. If they were heels, of course, they, they would not sign any of them. So uh, one of the most popular ones, and I didn't see any of these, and any of the Andre the Giant ones. So... Um, I think I have two of the Andre the Giant ones, which is real nice. But uh, this is Andre the Giant with the uh, entertaining legend Joey Bishop. Uh, what's kind of cool is Bishop's got his hands up uh, next to Andre's, kind of show you the size difference. Uh, the next card is, it's kind of a cool card of Dusty Rhodes. So uh, just kind of a candid photo. You, you can look at that, that shirt, that hat. That is so early 70s. Um, but, but a real cool card to have. Uh, one of the other cards is uh, Fritz Von Erich, of course, of the, I want to say it's the WCCW out there in Texas. Of course, he was the father of all the Von Erich sons, and sadly, there's only one left of them. But uh, And that must be his uh, American Heavyweight Championship belt. So uh, it is kind of weird, though, that... I. I think that the, that was a totally different territory with Fritz, so maybe they had something together where they could cross-promote. The next one is The Rock's father, Rocky Johnson, who uh, sadly passed away a few years ago. I was lucky enough to meet him once in uh, Milton, Florida. It was, uh, it was a show, and they were advertising uh, Come See Sika, Afa, and Rocky Johnson. Now, of course, by marriage, they were related for a while, uh, and there was pretty much nobody there, and I wish I had brought a ton of stuff because they were just signing for free, uh, didn't have a care in the world. Uh, now, for the first guy that's actually still alive is uh, Ivan Putski, Polish power, uh, totally different look than what he had in the WWF. Um, he had uh, kind of a different look back uh, when I was watching him in the mid and early 80s. But uh, Ivan Putski. Next one is gorgeous Gino Hernandez. Um, the sad thing is, is that he, was, uh, he died quite very young. But uh, Gino was kind of the Ric Flair of his territory with the looks and the... Uh, he would come out, make it look like at least that he was flying a private jet and he had all the jewelry and the fur jackets. Um, so uh, Gino was, uh, was a heck of a draw back then and unfortunately got uh, hooked on the, uh, the drugs. Next one is, and I hope I'm pronouncing this, the uh, 
the luchadors. I'm going to have trouble with some of their names, but El Bracerio, Sararo. Um, haven't really looked that guy up. Uh, a lot of those luchadors, because this was probably towards like the uh, Texas area. Um, so I'm sure they got a lot of luchadors back then. The next one is uh, two Brits, uh, Les Thornton and Tony Charles. Uh, I've read a lot about Les Thornton. They said that he was uh, he was like him and Billy Robinson. They were in Adrian Street from the uh, UK, real tough, uh, real wrestlers, real grapplers. So uh, Tony Charles I've heard of. Um, I believe Tony Charles is also deceased. Les Thornton died uh, just a few years ago. Next one is Siegfried Stanke. And uh, don't know anything about him. I haven't really researched him much. So, uh, But Siegfried Stanke. Next guy is Moondog Maine. Now, there were a lot of the Moondogs over the years. Uh, Moondog Rex, Moondog Spot. This is Moondog Maine. Uh, I believe there was a few other ones. Uh, so the, they were kind of like, supposed to be like almost like cavemen kind of thing. They came out and cut off jeans with ropes for belts. Uh, pretty tough guys. This one is another one I think will probably be very popular. If I do decide to sell these is the, uh, the original Sheik. Um, now he was based, I want to say, out of Mich the Michigan area. So that kind of shows you how far... How far these went, the, these cards, when they were produced, how far they expanded. Uh, probably the whole NWA kind of situation. So, Nick Kozak, I actually did look him up. He has passed away. Uh, didn't really, couldn't find much about him. Next one is Goliath and Gordman. Uh, don't know much about those guys. There are a lot of guys that are, you know... Just not really all that big of names. Maybe if somebody a little bit older than me that lived in that territory, it'd be like, you know, those two guys were like the Bullet Bob Armstrong of the uh, of the South. So now, I do know Jose Lothario. He was very famous when he uh, trained Shawn Michaels, and then they had a kind of a little segment with him and Michaels, and Michaels betrayed him kind of deal. So uh, Jose Lothario, Charlie Cook. Don't know much about good old Charlie. <clears throat> now, the big O, I, I tried to find a wrestler anywhere called the big O. And that looks like either Blackjack Mulligan or Blackjack Wyndham to me. If somebody knows, please let me know. Um, but, yeah, that's the big O. There's Scott Casey. He's actually still around. Uh, he also had a wrestling all-star card. So, um, he's, I could actually get this one signed. Uh, like I said, a lot of these guys, I remember these cards are getting up to be almost 53 years old. So unfortunately a lot of these guys have passed, but, uh, Scott Casey still around. Uh, he actually went by the moniker, uh, Cowboy Scott Casey. So Cowboy Scott Casey. And then one of everybody's favorite Thunderbolt Patterson. I love the King, the Scepter or the, the king's crown, the scepter looks great. Uh, he, he was in a lot of territories over the years. And then last but not least is two amigo, Mil Mascaras, um, legend luchador, probably the most famous luchador of all time, uh, was bigger probably in the, in the late sixties and seventies. Um, but, uh, if you ever see, he was actually in a Royal Rumble match, and uh, he was notorious for no selling. He wouldn't sell anybody's moves, and he uh, he got in a Royal Rumble match. This is probably 20 years ago, and um, eliminated himself by jumping out to land on somebody. And the word is is uh, the reason why he did that is he did not want anybody to actually eliminate him. So he went ahead and uh, did his own thing, like Mel always did. So I hope you enjoy these. Like I said, this is the 1970 to about 74 Boyd Pierce cards. Uh, one of the things I did research, you used to be able to buy these for about 50 cents each way back when. So 
back when they had these on tables. So if you can imagine, it's, it's kind of like a time war thing. If you can imagine going to a wrestling event and them having all these black and white photos and you just picked out which ones you want and you know, if it was a baby face, you, you tried to get it signed with your, your favorite blue, blue point, point pen. So, um, well, yes, uh, tell me what you think in the comments. Uh, we're going to try and do uh, card of the day videos from now on here. And I uh, hope everybody has a great day. Stay thrifty. Goodbye.